Hey everyone, my name is Travis. I'm the founder of Make Inspires. We have three maker spaces in New York and we've been teaching 3D printing for over 10 years. It's one of my favorite things. Our first 3D printer we got in 2013. It's actually back in this room over there. And we've been teaching 3D printing to kids and adults ever since then. Uh, right now I'm in our New York City maker space. And what we generally do with our 3D students is make a name tag for the first class. So, you know, what's a better way to learn than by doing? And we're gonna learn about Tinkercad. This is gonna be an introductory uh, class, a lesson for Tinkercad. And we're gonna make a name tag to learn about everything, you know, all, all the different things in the Tinkercad interface. Bam, here it is. So Tinkercad's more or less looked this more or less looked this way for over eight years. On the top left, you have your name of your project, you have your work plane in the middle, you got all your shapes on the right, and then all these other buttons all over the place that we're gonna learn more about as we go. This introduction will not cover all of these buttons, but we're gonna cover most of them. So the first thing that we do before we make our actual name tag is we just gotta explore a bit. So I recommend taking out a box and putting it on your work plane. You could do that by clicking and dragging, or you could tap once and, or I should say click once, move your mouse, and then click again. If you are on an iPad and you're tapping, it would be a tap and a drag, or a tap, release, and then you tap on the work plane. And the work plane is important because it's where all of our work lies. It's like our desk. And although there's no gravity inside of Tinkercad, there is gravity in real life. So if we want anything to print, we have to keep everything on the work plane within reason. We'll talk more about that in this, video and even more in uh, you know subsequent videos where we get on to more advanced designs. If you look at these little white nodes on the corner, you could drag them and change the shape. Everything that we're looking at is currently in millimeters. So you know 26 millimeters is about two and a half centimeters. 20 by 20 when it first comes out the default shape is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, two centimeters by two centimeters. You may have noticed that I just entered those values in, so you're able to do that as well. You can lift this to make it taller. This black cone is how you raise an object. To bring it back down, we can lower it. The number on the bottom right is the number relative to the work plane. So if it says zero, it means it's on the ground. We could have also just hit undo to get back down to the ground. When we're working with younger kids, uh, well, first of all, all this goes a lot slower and I will have them explore a little more on their own without me telling them what this all does. Um, with that said, I will point out undo pretty quickly because it's the best, right? Wish we had undo in normal life. And the next step before we move on to making the name tag is we also want to see how to look around. So on the top left dish, you have this cube and it starts off the same top and front. If you click on it, it'll give you a very direct view. I recommend clicking and dragging and then you can orbit around. So yeah, this is called orbiting, looking around. If you have a mouse, you could also use the right side of the mouse and move your mouse. If you have a mouse you, or a trackpad, you could also zoom in and zoom out using the way that you're probably used to, or you could use the plus or minus over here. While we're at it, sometimes you may get lost, like look, I'm underneath and it's gonna be a hard time for me to get back. There's the home view, the home view will bring you back. All right, on the right side, you'll notice that some shapes have, well, all, bit, all, sh <laughs> all shapes have this box, but some of them have more information than others. You can also adjust the, shape inside of here. But for the most part, we don't really use these, these sliders for the most part. You can change the color, but the color doesn't really matter. It's all about the filament. The hole we will learn about later. And now it's time for us to make a name tag. We've learned enough. So we're gonna delete this. To do that, you can hit delete on your keyboard or backspace or this little trash button there. By the way, if you hold your mouse over quite almost anything, it will tell you what it is. So name tags, I happen to have a name tag on me. It's a pretty average size name tag. Uh, 
this one's got my name <laughs> and it has the name of our makerspace. It's also got our logo in the background. And you'll notice that the back is flat, so it could be printed relatively easily. That's going to be important in one moment. I also have one of my favorite rulers here. When you get into 3D printing, you want a ruler around, maybe even a caliper. Today's project, we don't need a caliper, but I do want to point out that my name tag is about, what's that say? What's that say? It says about eight or nine centimeters, right? So that's 80 or 90 millimeters. And it's about four or five tall, four or five tall. And while we're at it, the base shape is about two or three millimeters thick. And then the letters go taller. So I don't know, a little less than a centimeter in total. You don't want it to be too tall because the letters can pop off, right? If it's on your neck or if it's on a, a backpack or wherever, you don't want the, actually my, my my eye has come off before. I've had dozens of these name tags and the eye can get caught on something and get ripped off. So like we were saying, the back is flat. What shapes here have a flat back? Yes, we can make a name tag out of a sphere, but for the sake of ease for the 3D printer, we're gonna use a shape that has a flat back. There are a lot of other shapes that we can use. We could also combine shapes to make a shape. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna make a simple shape for everyone. So we're gonna take a box and we're gonna make our back by making it thinner. Like I said, mine was about three millimeters thin. I mentioned that mine was, you know, about five tall. We'll make this one four tall. And I said it was about eight or nine wide. So I'm gonna say 80. Actually, for the shape that I wanna get, we don't need this, we don't need this that wide. You're gonna see in a moment. But we're gonna combine shapes to make a simple backing shape. So we're gonna take these cylinders. This is one of the one times where uh, right away, we are gonna use the sliders. So you can see the sides. If you zoom in, you can see the sides pretty easily. It's not a very perfect circle. So what I'm gonna do, by the way, just hit the home button. I'm gonna drag up the side. So it's a prettier circle, more accurate. And I'm gonna make that three tall, just like the other one. So when we combine them, they're gonna sort of become one thing. And then I'm gonna make it 40 tall. And then I could use a line to smush it in there, but I'm just gonna use my eye. We also have, um, you'll notice that there's something called a snap grid. So they right now they're moving one millimeter at a time, which also helps. I could duplicate that or copy that, I could copy and paste it, but I like to duplicate. When you hit duplicate, it makes another one in the same exact spot. And then if you're on a computer, you could use the advantage of using your arrow key as opposed to your mouse to just move it over. If you're on an iPad, you can't do that. And now, I'm gonna take these three shapes and I'm gonna group them. I can select them all by well, a few means. Uh, one would be clicking and dragging, making a, a, a bound box around it. Another would be clicking and then hit, holding down shift and clicking on the other two. And then lastly, because we have nothing else around, this wouldn't work for all cases. You could hit command A to select all. And I'm gonna go up here to hit group. Well, notice when we group, it's gonna just sort of select one color and become one thing. So now we have like a rounded edged name tag, sort of reminds me of a, a dog tag, doesn't it? And what's missing? We have our back, we need a name. So over here we have our text. If we click on text and we drag it out, if we put it on top of the shape, it would automatically be on top of that shape meaning the text will start on top of the shape that we're hovering over. If I drag it to the side, it's gonna be on the ground. Now, why does that matter? It matters more arguably with other designs, but it does even matter with this one. Like let's say you had a big, uh, a long name and you wanted the edges to sort of hang off a little bit. Then you arguably would want it to start down here. Now, let me, let me show you why. So, um, my first name isn't that long, so I'm going to choose my middle name. And I'm going to scale it down. By the way, this is another good time to show you guys another lesson. Anyone who's done graphic design will know this. 
I just hit undo. I could scale this down and, and lock the ratio if I hold down shift. If I hold down shift and scale this down, it will maintain its ratio. And then I'm gonna drag it over. Now, right now it fits within it perfectly. So there would be really no benefit to dragging it on the ground first. But let's say that I wanted to hang off a little bit like that. Then there would be a benefit to dragging it on the ground first because if we orbit down, you'll see the letters start at the ground. So just to bring home the point, if I drive drag text up here, as opposed to the ground, right, and it's floating over a little bit, it's literally floating over a little bit, which is possible, but it would require supports, uh, which are, uh, anyone who's done 3D printing knows what it is immediately, or almost immediately, probably. If you haven't, it's, it's like the analogy of, of scaffolding for 3D printing. It prints something to be ripped away later, just so you can defeat gravity. So because we started on the bottom, it doesn't really matter. This also gives us the opportunity to learn about aligning. If I click on align, all these dots show up. This one will align it to the top. This one will align it to the middle. This one will align it to the bottom. I'm going to use the middle on that one and the middle on this one. Now it's perfectly in the middle. All right, we're getting there. This is pretty neat. What's missing? Arguably from some flair, but when it comes to a working name tag and, you know, without like a magnet or a pin in the back, we need a hole. That way we can use a lanyard or something like that to, to string it up. It's also a good opportunity to learn something new. We're going to take away, instead of adding, we're going to take away. And that's what these holes are all about. Anything can be made into a hole, but in Tinkercad, by default, you have two basic holes. You have your box hole and you have your cylinder hole. This cylinder we're going to use to make the hole in the top. And similar to earlier, we don't want to drag it out on the top because we want it to go all the way through. So if we put it on the ground, it's inherently automatically going to go all the way through. If I look at my my little, little hole here, I, I made it almost the exact shape that would work for this. So that's about as small as you'd want it to get because then it's going to get hard to you know, put a ring, or, a ring around it or this clip around it. And that's about three by five or six millimeters. Uh, like we saw right in the beginning, I could literally just type in three and five and get that pretty accurately. Although I did it sideways, I'd rather do five and three like that. And then just like earlier, I'm gonna use my arrows. We could use the align again, control A and align everything to the middle. And now we're gonna group. So control A, select everything and hit group takes a moment for it to calculate and boom, there we go. Little tip, you don't want your hole over here, why? Because a lot of the rings are gonna be hard to loop around that area, if not impossible. Like this one just wouldn't work at all. If you had a keychain loop, it may, but you really want it closer. So I'm gonna hit undo twice to get back to this step. Okay, now I want this to be quick, but let's show you one more thing for this intro. We learned about undo, we learned about duplicate, we learned how to orbit, we learned about home, going back home, we learned about zooming in, zooming out, we learned how to drag out shapes, <laughs> and we learned how to group. Now, let's just take a little bit of that expertise and add a little bit of flair to our name tag. Now, I could spend minutes and tens of minutes or even hours talking about that, but again, for the sake of time, I'm gonna do two flares two stylized items. One is just, actually I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do three, why not? One is taking a star or any shape really and just like adding it. So I'm just gonna, you can, you can again, you can quote add it anywhere. I'm gonna, for this example, put it on the top right and I'm gonna use shift while I change the ratio and there's my star. Now something a little more advanced. What if we wanted to indent the star? What if we wanted to indent in the name tag of that star? I'm gonna take out the star. I'm gonna put it at the bottom and we're gonna learn something new. Again, we have rotate. There's three ways to rotate this. Your X, Y, and Z plane. If you don't see all three, it's probably because you're looking at it straight on. You wanna have your view a little bit to the side. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it or spin it 180 degrees. I'm then gonna make it much smaller. 
And I'm going to use, oh, I forgot. We also taught you how to move things up and down with the black cone, which requires some practice. Now, this won't remove something until I make it a hole. Every shape can be a hole. And then this is a good example where I don't want to group this into the E. So I'm just going to hold down Shift and click on the bottom of the name tag. Oh, it's all grouped. So I can't do that. I was going to just have it merge into the bottom, but because it's all grouped, it's going to merge into the E as well. Well, you know what? Let's use this as a learning opportunity. We're going to ungroup it temporarily. We're going to go up here. We're going to ungroup it. This will temporarily be, you know, ungrouped. By the way, if you exported this, these holes would show up. So you don't need to group to show to have the holes work in the export. But for the sake of seeing it, um, it's worth it. So I'm going to click on this, hold down shift, click on the back. And why not? I'll add this too. Just those three. And hit group. And now, whoa, that's, I didn't, ex I didn't expect that to happen. I could have looked underneath and seen if it went all the way through. And um, we got a cool effect. That's pretty neat. If we were, if we were adding, not removing, if we were adding that star and it went all the way through, that would be bad. You don't want anything to go underneath the work plan. All right. And now my last example for this tutorial, which is my first YouTube slash internet slash Instagram slash whatever tutorial in a long time is Scribble. I don't even know if Scribble was around since the last time I did it. We're going to drag out Scribble and then we have this option to draw things. Now drawing in 3D isn't really 3D. It's just going to take what we make and it's going to make it 3D. So I am going to make a lovely smiley face. And then, you know, there are other options here. We can erase, we can make these larger shapes with this. But for the most part, it's all about the pencil tool. And then we are going to go to done. And now we've got our smiley face. Same thing, I need to scale it down. Oftentimes it's really good to scale from the, the top, from the height, because it just goes straight down. And there we have it. It looks sort of looks huge here. We have to keep in mind that each one of these boxes is one centimeter, right? So the name tag in reality is, I don't know, quote, this big, like this big slash will look this big, and that's it. So if you are a hobbyist, or if you're a student and you're learning Tickercad, we're going to have more resources on our YouTube. We have some from back in the day, but we're going to add some more. If you're an educator and you're learning about Tinkercad, we have a lot of resources because Make Inspires does professional development for teachers. And you can visit our website and you will learn as a teacher. If you want more resources, we have an innovators membership where you can sign up for dozens of our curriculums, including 3D printing with Tinkercad. It also includes Q and A's with us if you have questions about any of these topics or the equipment involved in those topics. So, oh, last thing, before I say goodbye, Tinkercad technically auto saves. So as long as you have a good internet connection, this will always auto save. But what I like to do is hit Tinkercad when I'm done. And then also, if you actually want to 3D print this, you're going to need to go to export and export it as an STL and then put it in your slicer software uh, to be 3D printed. And maybe we'll do a video on that as well. I like I was mentioning, if you hit Tinkercad on the top left, that's one of the ways that really makes me confident that it's being saved. And that is it. I hope everyone had an educational time here. And we look forward to seeing you again. Bye.